Hey guys, if anybody's interested in an old corn crib <laughs> or uh, wants a uh, tour of this relic that's on my place, um, it's pretty neat. It's just a shame for it because it's probably never going to get used again. Uh, it's pretty tall too, and it's hard on camera to show you the height. I am six feet tall, six foot two, I guess, and I'm right about there. All right, right about there. So you've got your six foot two to there, and then it's pretty tall. Uh, you'd need a pretty good elevator to get up to the top. Um, one thing with this, why it's kind of neat, I think, it's how well, first, how thin it is. And you got trees growing in it now but it's it's fairly narrow and it's long um they used to use this when they had uh, the dairy farm like i said they never had a combine uh, all they had used is a uh, corn picker um that they would pick the uh, corn with and i'm told uh, i have a uh, older older gentleman <laughs> that uh, helps me out from time to time on the farm and uh, he used to work here back when they were milking cows and then he was drafted to uh, Vietnam so he was taken away from the farm here at that time but um, he remembers this thing being filled right to the roof the whole the whole thing um, and it looks like here they had used these telephone poles that's basically what they are they're the same treated telephone poles as they built the upper pole shed with um, and it looks like they had poured a concrete collar around the bottom and it appears to have uh, cracked all up I don't know how far the, down the concrete goes you can see they notched in these cross members to help hold the weight uh, I think if you'd use it today it would uh, probably collapse if you filled it but um, and the mesh is starting to rust away but yeah, they, this was uh, their storage, grain storage, for the uh, dairy cattle. Um, what they didn't chop for silage to put in the silo went into these, uh, into the corn crib here. So yeah, it's pretty neat. And then when it was time to get the corn out, they had these doors on the bottom. Let's see, we got one two three four five six seven doors to empty this thing um these rocks i had all piled up in there they were from the field um they're not really doing anything and we got a groundhog hole right there i put a trap over that uh, groundhog hole and uh it was a lot smarter than i was it was always tripping the uh, trap and no groundhog but you can see how high this thing is i mean standing here looking up at this thing and get fancy with my camera work here I can kind of give you a sense of the scale of this thing so yeah it's another neat piece of uh, dairy farm history they spent a lot of time building this uh, putting all these poles in the ground and they had the electric fence going on here this was a pasture up until a couple years ago but and you can see it's not too far away from where the cows were in the barn. So I don't know if they had a stationary hammer mill or if they had a grinder mixer. That's before my time. I'd have to ask some questions on it. Um, the real issue with the corrosion here and why it's rotten away, this post here isn't even in the ground anymore. Um, this is real wet in here. And you can see there's like a, a waterway right down through here where the water runs. And... They kind of build it in the swampy area so like i say i don't have any plans to use it i know a couple pieces of tin on the roof are loose uh, and have been flopping around on windy days but and i think if i'd own the place i don't think i'd tear it down either um just because of uh, well it, as long as it's standing it, it'll probably stay here i'll put it put it that way um, some of these poles can be recycled uh, if you'd want to build something. They're they're solid from about there up. So I definitely save those poles. Um, one thing I want to do eventually, I want to get an on-the-farm uh, fuel storage tank. Like I said, I'm bailing fuel with 100 gallons at a time with my pickup truck fuel transfer tank. And there's some advantages to that. Uh, one of them being <laughs> you're always putting fresh fuel in the tractor. But uh, it, it's it's not handy at all. I want to get a uh, 
farm fuel tank to uh, store diesel fuel and I probably would build a little shed to put them in that I can lock so you don't have uh, fuel thieves that you tend to get out in the country. <laughs> so yeah, that's just a quick video I thought I'd uh, put together here on this uh, old corn crib and how they used to uh, store their grain back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and up till the 80s. Um, I do like the metal, the round metal ones. Um, and you know, there aren't that many of those around in this area. I don't know why. Um, if they just didn't have a dealer around that was selling them at the time or if there just wasn't uh, much interest in them there are a lot of these wooden ones and especially the type that's real popular are the type that have the corn on either side and then the center drive through um, with the roof slots that used to open up to fill uh, from the roof a lot of a lot of wooden corn cribs around and very few metal ones so i don't know what the story was there or why but um yeah so they'd uh, Back in here they had a old Dodge dump truck, I'm pretty sure, and that they used to pick corn. And I don't know if they had a deflector to go into the dump truck. I know they said it was a two-man operation, but then they'd back here to an elevator and put it right up in there and that slots up there. And then just basically fill it up. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, cheap on the farm grain storage, uh, feed dairy cows, so. <laughs> It's pretty neat. Like I said, it'll probably, as long as it can stand under its own power, it'll probably stay here. So, yeah. And just a little bit more on the dairy farm history here while I'm uh, uh, out with the camera. Um, this here was the area where the uh, manure used to go out. Um, uh, they, I probably showed this in my uh, dairy barn tour, but I was kind of limited on how long I could make that video. Um, but you see the... Uh, Gutter cleaner used to come out here both sides. And uh, this was the in and out basically in here to uh, that hole. <laughs> and then it just went up and out. And they had to spread manure practically every day. Um, I was told on Sundays they wouldn't, that they would uh, uh, just fill the spreader and then spread two loads on Monday, um, which I guess makes sense. So they had this little area here where. Uh, the gutter cleaner was and uh, I don't know what else um, you can see the electric is still there from the gutter cleaner and uh, the line that feeds it and then the uh, knife switch box and then a receptacle um, the electric in this barn really bothers me and this winter I am going to disconnect everything from the panel box that is no longer in use or necessary there is the electric for the hay fan. The drying fan is still up in the top of the barn and there's no drying fan. The 220 volt line that goes out to feed the silo is still hooked into the panel box. So you figure all it takes is somebody to come here and I have a no, I put on there no. <laughs> so that should be universal, no. Um, if somebody comes in here and is trying to get the lights on or trying to, I mean, there's how many people that rented this place uh, Somebody comes in here and they want to make power for some reason and they start throwing switches in here and that's what worries me. You got lines like this and this. And that's no good. Now, oh, that one is unhooked, okay. That might be for the silo. So I might be getting ahead of myself here. Somebody did take some precautions. But there are some things that are still hooked up um, and need to get out of that panel box. And this winter I want to do that. Uh, maybe I can make some videos if anybody's interested. But my goal this winter, and I have some pretty ambitious uh, goals, if it's not snowing a lot and uh, there's not much going on at my other job, which could go either way there, I am going to try to clean this barn up. I mean completely clean it out, clean it up, and finally get things organized in here that uh, makes a little bit of sense. Um, it is dirtier than it looks. I, I'm looking at the camera now. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like a typical dairy barn, but it is kind of a mess. There's still cow manure in the troughs, and there's so much rotten wood and junk in here. I did sweep the alley a little bit here, but I want to get all the electric issues addressed and disconnected, and not only disconnected, but take this right out of here. This is something you're never going to be able to use again. Um, it's old technology. It's corroded beyond all help. And 
if it doesn't need to be in here, I want to remove it. Um, that way I can kind of start fresh and get some uh, better lighting in here. But uh, the other thing is over at my dad's, I have a ton of stuff I want to bring over that I still had from when I had my operation over there. Uh, one of the things being farm tires. I have a lot of implement tires. Uh, I got a lot of tractor tires, spares for wagons and implements. And I want to stack them up inside here. Um, and uh, kind of organize them but yeah it, it's always this time of year fall and on into winter I just get the uh, I guess you could say the um, feeling that I want to be around uh, dairy cattle um, the, the nostalgic feeling it's just something with fall and winter I, I really do enjoy being around uh, dairy cows like I said when I worked on the dairy farm it was one of my favorite jobs um, milking cows and uh, dealing with cattle and it's such a shame I really wish this uh, place was in better shape and it's not only the facilities even if I had <laughs> even if I had state-of-the-art milking facilities here and could milk cows and had no issues getting uh, uh, the financial side of it going and uh, getting a dairy herd and getting started um, the local milk market just is terrible it's there's just too much milk and uh, there used to be, well, it's like that everywhere you go, even in Pennsylvania. There used to be, everybody says, oh, there used to be 18 dairy farms. Now there's just one. Well, in my township, there are none left. They're all gone. Um, over in the next valley, there's quite a few. And to ship the milk from where they're shipping from, it is a, it's a pretty good haul. Um, there's just not a local demand for milk. Um we do have a very small independent uh, dairy uh, in the area, and they bottle their own uh, uh, milk, chocolate milk, iced tea, that kind of stuff. And uh, they are swamped, and we're dropping producers left and right. Um, they pay more than anybody else. They're one of the better uh, dairies to ship to. There's a waiting list of probably 50 years to get on the list to uh, ship your milk to them. Uh, and it's such a shame. It's, it's just not, it's not something that's going to pay in this area. Um, even on a larger scale, I just don't think it's it's uh, as much as I like dairy cows. And the next thing is milking cows is as close as you can get to a regular job as far as pay. I mean, <laughs> you figure you go to work, you get your paycheck every week or every two weeks. And, and with a dairy, that's kind of the same deal. Every, every two weeks you get a milk check. Um, it's not like grain farming where you have to wait all year. You, you make all your money in the fall, or if you store grain, you, you make your money all at once, and then you're a nervous wreck watching the prices go up and down, up and down, trying to pick the best time to sell. And uh, meanwhile, your uh, expenses are mounting, and <laughs> it's just a, a weird way to do business. That uh, you, <laughs> It's not like dairy farming where you're, you're paid twice a twice a month and the checks are there and uh, you have money to keep operating um so anyway i'm sorry about this uh, video it's uh, dragging on here I'm just rambling basically um but yeah just looking at this i mean this is just a perfect picture for dairy in our area just empty stalls no uh, no cows just kind of what it is and uh, I don't see it changing so and uh, not just here but I know a lot of places there's abandoned dairy farms all over the place so it, it, it is a shame but uh, it's kind of how things are and uh, it is what it is so all right guys uh, like I said go over to Facebook PA farms click like um, Share your photos, any farm photos you want to include. I have decided I'd like to put together a slideshow of all the uh, all the YouTube subscribers, uh, all your pictures you send in if you want to be in a slideshow. Um, <coughs> we will uh, put together a whole uh, slideshow of all your uh, videos, uh, or all your uh, pictures of all the uh, subscribers and viewers. So if you'd like to be a part of that, um, I guess there's no problem with doing that. Maybe YouTube won't like it, but if you guys want to do it and uh, want to be volunteer pictures for a uh, viewer slideshow, 
um, go ahead and do that over on Facebook at PA Farms. Um, and I'll try to uh, post uh, pictures daily on there on that site also. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.